machine learning crash course today we want to talk about linear classification models and continue our discussion to to learn about linear models for classification um, we saw in in previous chapters we talked about um, linear regression models so now we want to talk about linear models for classification so our goal is to pass um, the input data which is x um, we want to take the input to a model and then the model assign this input variable this um, input vector to one of the k um, discrete outputs okay so we have um, let's say we have k classes one two to k let's call them c1 c2 to ck and we want to have a model that takes an input and then assigns this input variable to one of these classes okay in other word um, we want to divide the input space into um, different regions um, let's plot um, let's say the data are something like this then probably um, we, we know that uh, um, proper maybe classification model is something like this right so um, we call this decision boundary or decision surface okay and as you could see in this case um, our data has two different features um, in other word each data is a two element vector and the decision boundary is a 1d um, is a 1d thing okay in this case it is a 1d curve so if, if um, the input vector has d dimensions then the decision boundary has d minus one dimension okay so as you could see in here maybe um, the decision boundary is something like this so it could be linear okay the decision boundary could be linear um, in in this case if um, if we could separate our data perfectly with, with linear classifier we call the data um, linearly separable okay so we call them linearly separable okay so for two classes when we have two classes we want to a reasonable choice for um, choosing the output is whether it is belong to zero or one zero means that um, the first class and um, one means the second class okay this is a reasonable um, choice when we have two classes 
when we have k greater than 2 like let's say k is equal to 5 we could create a target vector with 5 elements like this and the non-zero element in this case um, the second one which is 1 um, shows that um, this data um, corresponds to the second class okay so it, it, it shows the probability of, of um, assigning the data to um, the second class so it is c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 and because we interpret them as probability um, so the sum of them should be one okay let's call them ti okay and so each element shows the probability of how much um how much the um, target value um belongs to a specific class okay so for for our training data we know that uh, which which data is for what class so um, we know that for sure the output the output class but in the test phase maybe we get something like this from our classifier Two point one zero zero. this means that um, our classifier um, predicts that the data, the test data, um, belongs um, to to the first class with seventy percent confidence, and um, it says that it belongs to um, to the second class with the twenty percent probability, and and so on. So, uh, and the sum of these are one. Okay okay so so actually now we want to find some discriminant function as we talked about discriminant function in previous sessions so we want to have a function that takes an input and assigns this input to k different um, output which, which 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 are our classes okay and let's say we have um, just two classes okay now for two classes if if we assume that now our um, our model is a linear model because now we want to talk about linear um, classification models so let's say that the output of the model is so this is the linear discriminant function and we say that if y is greater than 0 it means that x belongs to c1 otherwise x belongs to to the second class okay so if you want to know what is the what is the decision boundary in this case um, we know that the decision boundary is where we are we are in in, in this um, we are in this hyperplane okay so we should have y of x equal to zero okay and let me to show you on on this figure so if we have the data in this way and
and this is W transpose X plus W null and so so on this line we, we know that W of X is equal to zero okay this is the equation of a fiber plane okay as you you probably know if if you want to um, describe a line in in 2d space you, you for example let's say this is y equal to 2x plus 3 we could say that um, this is x this is y now in our case we call this x1 and x2 so x2 and we could rewrite this as okay so um, the point on, on the line um, if, if we put the point on the line in the equation it we we get zero okay so you could see that the decision boundary is zero for two classes case okay now for for two different points that they are on, on the decision boundary we know that let's call them x a and x of b we know that the x of a is equal to zero because it is on the on the decision boundary and similarly uh, y of x of b is equal to zero okay and we know that it is w transpose x of a plus w null because it is a linear model and from this one we know that it is zero so if we subtract them we get W transpose multiplied by x a minus x b is equal to zero. What does it mean? Um, if if um, you are familiar with um, dot product of two vectors, you know that it, it, it means that the dot product between W and x a minus x b is equal to zero so it means that these two vectors are orthogonal to each other to get sense to what does it mean let's say so this is y equal to zero so this is the decision boundary this is where y greater than zero this is way and this is where y is less than zero and as you could see w in this direction and and x a minus x b is in 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 this direction so these two are orthogonal to each other so now um this is um an important feature of um of linear or um decision boundary hyperplane decision boundary okay um for for com compact notation um we saw also in linear regression models we append a dummy variable one to to get rid of the bias now we want to do the same thing with with um with this bias in here to compact our notation so we know that it is something like this 
or for linear classification models, we could write that in this way. In which W tilde is W null and W vector. So this is vector and this is just a um, bias number. So it is just a number. Okay. But this is a vector. And X tilde is X null and our feature vector and x null is 1 in here okay so if you um, if you dot product this one and this one you get the similar thing in here okay but so so this is a more compact notation and easier to work with so we um, we actually always um, write um, this linear classification models in in this way but what does it mean when when we write it in this way you should know that we um, increase the dimension by one so um, let's say in in previous case our data has two dimension x1 and x2 now our features our feature vector has is something like this x1 x1 x2 so we have another dimension so it is like we um, increased our dimension by one okay this is x1 x2 and okay so and 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 in this um, space this classifier um, pass through the origin okay so this is interesting that in this case in in 2d case it is not passed through the origin but when we um, go to higher dimension space now um, the classifier um, passes through the origin okay okay now for for multiple class case um, maybe um, a very simple choice for you you just say that okay we could create k different classifiers to classify each class versus others okay we call this method one versus rest and it means that if we have three classes it means that we obtain a decision boundary for let's say that here is class 1 here is not class 1 okay this decision boundary is here is c2 and here is not c2 okay but as you could see um, we could say that okay here is class 1 here is class 3 because it is not 1 and it is not um, 2 here is class 2 let's call it R2 but for for here we don't know and so we we have the ambiguity okay this is a one problem of um, having just K classifiers and regioning in in this way okay Another way is to just um, create k times k minus 1 over 2 classifiers. Um, actually, these are binary classifiers, okay? Um, to um, 
classify one versus one classes okay so probably you know that what does it mean if, if you don't know don't worry about it too much but just it means that we want to for 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 example in three classes case we have a classifier for c1 and c3 we have a classifier for c1 and c2 and we have a classifier for c2 and c3 as you could see um, we create um, a, a binary classifier for every possible combination of classes and so and this is the um, number of every possible two combination of, of these classes but also in, in this case we still have the problem that for this region we don't know how should we decide about this region we will see that in 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 practice and in practical examples we assign a score function to the output values of classifier and for for this um, for these regions and for all other regions we assign a classes that gets higher score based on the output of classifiers okay okay now but for for solving this now we could create so as I mentioned we could create a scoring function or something like that okay and and our decision is something like this it is belongs to ck if the score function we let's call it the score function or discriminant function output is greater than yj just re remind I just want to um, remind you that k is big k the capital k is number of all number of classes okay so and so in in this case the decision boundary is where y k of x is equal to y j of x okay now if we do the same thing in here like in two classes case we obtain something like this for for decision boundary um, and in this case the decision boundaries for example in three classes is um, is like this okay so it is, it is not like this but also it is like this one as you as you could see we, we don't have amb ambiguity in this case now okay so okay until now we just did an introduction about um, what is um, linear classification models now the important question is that okay how how should we learn the parameters okay because the training means that we want to learn the parameters to classify our data okay so now we want to talk about learning parameters of the linear discriminant function okay um, for learning parameters we have several ways one of them is list of squares approach the second one is Fisher 
Fisher's linear discriminant and the third one is perceptron algorithm today we we talk about these two okay okay so first we we talk about least square so don't forget now we want to learn the parameters of linear classification models which is something like this and so we want to learn these parameters based on our data okay okay so now let's say our our output data is um, one hot encoded okay so and the output of this model is has different has k different elements okay so we talked about this this is each element is wk transpose x plus a bias term which we could write it in in this way okay okay if we stack all of these um, columns um, together all of these vectors together and gather them in a matrix we could write this in, in a more compact way now in this case w is a matrix in which the k column of that um, is is just this one okay which is related to the um, k output okay now if you write um, the squared error so so our approach in, in list square is we first um, write the list square error and then um, minimize the error respecting to our parameters to obtain our parameters so now the error is 1 over 2 <coughs> trace transpose okay you could write the error in, in this way if um, it is not a very um, complicated thing and does not need um, lots of manipulation you just need to um, carefully you could do this element wise but in here it is a more compact way to to just write the square there and the trace um, is is not a um, very um, complicated thing let's say just if you have a matrix like this the trace means that the sum of diagonal elements okay so in this case is a1 plus a4 so this is this is a trace of matrix and in so you could write the error function in this way okay now if you minimize this respect to to the parameters w tilde which is our model parameters you could derive closed form solution based on the and um, the t is is the target values for for our data okay so it is it is much like similar to the linear regression model if you remember that and 
we actually call this pseudo inverse and show this with a cross in here now we could say that the output of of the model which is this we could write this as okay so and, and as I mentioned the matrix T is a matrix that have all the target values of the training data is that in in, in, in that in itself in other words the nth row of that is target of um, nth um, training data okay so each training data target value is a vector now we know about that because each of each of them is is a one hot vector one hot vector okay um so this is the list square um solution for obtaining weight parameters but um as you could see we don't have any constraint for um for um, putting constraint on the output values to to be between zero and one okay so um, in that case we, we cannot interpret them as probability okay so now we want to talk about the problems of of least a square approach um, the very first problem of that is is um, lack of robustness to to outliers. As you remember, it, we we had the same problem in in regression um, linear regression model. Okay, so okay, let's say our data are in here now if we um, draw the decision boundary obtained by um, list square method we have something like this probably now let's add some outlier here we add some outlier in this case um, the classifier and the decision bound boundary will be something like this actually it is supposed to be a line okay and this is too bad um, in other words the classifier penalize um, these outliers because the output of these are are too correct okay and as we will um, discuss in um, in logistic regression we solve this problem but but this is one major problem of list square another important another more important and um, problem of list square is to let's say our data we have this one and this class and another class If we use um, list of square method, the decision boundary will be something like this, which is um, very bad for 
um, for actually this data okay um, and but we know that these data are linearly separable and they are very nice but this is the major problem of um, list square method also we will solve it in in logistic regression which is another way for um, linear classification model okay so this was the list square method for learning um, parameters in linear class uh, linear classification model um, the second way is to use Fisher linear discriminant okay um, one one way to um, look at the classification problem is to um, see them as dimensionality reduction let's say when we calculate this value um, and and suppose um, x is 2d vector then we um, calculate this it is a number so it is like the projection from 2d to to just one dimension okay um, and so if we if we put a threshold and let's say if w is greater than minus w null then the class is c1 otherwise it is c2 okay so it, it is just like linear classification model so we we look at it in, in a different way we put um, the bias in here and the weight vector in here and look at it as a pro projection um, problem okay so so um, we need to find um, a projection that preserves um, because because when we project data from higher dimension to to lower dimension we lose information okay now um, what is important for us is to preserve class separability okay so we want to find um, a projection that that could um, maximize the class the between classes separability um, and, and discrimination in, in, in the projection space okay so let's say um, the first class has n1 instances and the mean vector of that is 1 over n1 And sum over all of the values of of the corresponding data for that class. Okay, the simplest measure for for know how the class are um, are from are far from each other when we project them with W transpose is to is to use these project projection of these vectors um, so let's um, denote them by italic so maybe it's better to just write them in another color okay m2 these are different from this m1 and, and m2 is equal to 
these are actually the projection of M1 and M2 okay so let me to define them in here MK is equal to the projection of MK okay and so we we want to find W which which are the parameters of our model such that this discrimination is maximized but we know that if we um, uh, make the W larger so this this value increases but the nature of, the, of that line um, does not change because let's say you have the line 2x plus 4y equal to 0 this is um, a line something like this if you um, multiply both sides in 10 let's say it is a still this line okay so the nature of this line is not changed so for considering this fact we could we could say okay we want to maximize this value but the norm of W is is one. Okay, this is the Euclidean norm of W vector. Okay, so if we have something like this in our data, we are we 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 want to find this line. Okay, because in this line, let's say this is something like Gaussian distribution in here, and the mean, this is M2 minus M1, okay, the projected M2 minus M1 has maximum distance, um, and then we put a threshold in here now we could classify them um, each data which falls into this um, region we classify that as class 1 and in, in this region classify it as um, 2 okay but but there is another factor which is important so let's say um, our data is something like this in this case if we find um, this projection the overlap is is a lot and it it causes trouble okay so this projection maybe is not the best solution for us so in other word to consider um, the factor of of um, this overlap we define within class variance okay so it is a variance then when we projected our data um, this is the variance um, of them and the yn is the projected data okay now Fisher criterion says that okay we define a criterion which is the ratio of m2 minus m1 squared so we want to maximize this distance between 
projected average but also um, we want to minimize the within class variance so in, in other words we want to um, projected class to to be narrow okay to have to um, have less overlap with each other so simply we want to minimize within classes variance the total within class variances okay so the good news is that you could solve this for for w and you could see that w is proportional to for, for two classes problem in which this w is x n minus m1 x n minus m1 transpose plus or class 2 x n minus m2 x n minus m2 transpose okay so that is great so we have we obtained um, a parameter so we we call this method fissures linear discriminant after we um, obtained this we could model um, the conditional um, probability and using maximum likelihood and uh, model this with with Gaussian distribution and then use um, after obtaining with maximum likelihood the parameters of Gaussian distribution we could use um, decision theory which we will talk about that to to obtain the optimal threshold because in this case we will have to Gaussian distribution that we want to obtain this as optimal threshold okay so this is Fisher linear discriminant analysis that in in the next session I will show you how to um, use that in in Python and with scalar so um, and also you could um, apply this on on more more than two classes um, you could refer to 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 the book to um, know deeper about that but I think it is enough for just get the intuition about what does the Fisher linear discriminant does okay hope to enjoy from this session um, bye